In today's video, I'm gonna explain how to solo the final dungeon boss in the Warlord's Ruin, and I'm gonna do so by doing a whole lap myself, and then I will die, and I'll show you the build and the loadout that I'm using. So I'm gonna do sort of like a live explanation. We're gonna rally the flag here, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna push up here. We're obviously using Solar Titan for this one. We're using Strand for the other two. First thing, first thing we're gonna do is shoot that, and we're throwing our healing nade at our own feet, because we're gonna try and get our restoration timer up to the maximum amount that we can because that is our survivability for this one we're getting that up want to shoot both of these wizards after shooting all those acolytes and then continue to shoot these acolytes and i will start shooting these eyes one of these pops up on you shoot that with the fusion rifle or slug shotgun whatever you got on we're gonna shoot the other eyes okay but now that we've shot both sets of eyes what's gonna happen is this guy's gonna spawn in i'm gonna shoot him down to one shot and then let him throw his totem he's thrown his totem so now we'll Finish him off. We're gonna stand in the middle like a Venn diagram. Put a wall down to block the boss from absolutely annihilating us. Then we're gonna focus on this melee guy while continuing to shoot these enemies so we can keep our radiant timer up. We're gonna punch this guy now that we're down to about four seconds or less, and then we're gonna head to the back. He's gonna disappear in just a moment with the imminent wish. And he's dead. Now we can continue to clear these ads here. See, I don't have restoration, so I'm gonna throw this nade at my feet. Clear these ads. As soon as I hear that, I heard the little noise. Now it's time to do damage to the boss. Shooting him in his eye here, trying to hit the crit. Uh, we ran out, so we'll hit the reload. Shoot all these guys. Trying to keep our restoration timer up as much as possible. And stay really, really active on those adds. You can keep the timer up pretty high. We're gonna come up here, and the first thing we do is try and kill these wizards. Now we've got our nade backs. So we throw that down over here. Let's finish these wizards off, those guys. And wizards are dead. We're gonna kill these blights. Now that they're gone, we're gonna shoot the eyes. Explode and shoot more of these guys. We're trying to keep our restoration timer up. We got 12 seconds, so we're good. We shoot this guy. We're gonna lower him, but we're gonna let him throw his totem. Shoot this black that's underneath us. Let's over there. Finish this guy off. And then stand in the Venn diagram part of it in the middle of the two circles. Putting the wall down. Push over here. We're at seven seconds. We're paying attention to our hex timer. Now it's time to punch this guy and back up. It's gonna be damaged in just a moment. We can use this guy to proc our bait and switch. See, I don't have restoration. Pay attention to my health bar. I'm just gonna throw the nade on my feet in the middle of that. And then we've done as much damage as we can do. Now we're shooting these scions, getting our restoration timer back up, pick up all the ammo, head up to the next area. We can, we want to keep that timer going. Looks like the timer's ran out. It's okay though. We'll do. Get that timer back is we'll throw our nade when we get the chance. Kill that wizard. So now the goal is to throw the nade at the feet, getting restoration up. We're gonna keep the timer going. Shoot these blights. Keep shooting these adds. Oh, that restoration timer is at max. Time to shoot this guy. Now that he spawned in his totem, we can kill him. Stand in the middle of the Venn diagram. Put the wall down to block this guy off. It's going to blind him. Shoot the adds as much as we can. And keep the restoration going. The restoration's still going. It's at three seconds. Time to punch him. And head back here. And use this guy to proc our bait and switch. Just got to reload that mess that up so this will be a good example if you do mess up your rotation so if you don't do quite enough damage what's going to happen is you're going to have to do the damage over again this is what's going to happen in this scenario I don't feel like you have to rush the damage too much so i see how i didn't quite do enough damage all that's going to happen is everything's going to spawn back in again you get another chance to do it again treat everything the exact same so obviously be a very light damage phase you just have to shoot the boss with the maybe one or two lunar fusion rifle shots use that guy to proc bait and switch And this will push him over pretty easily. Throw the healing at our feet. Definitely pushed over. Shoot these adds to extend the restoration timer. Okay, now we're gonna go up to this top spot here. Same thing. All the damage we can do there. Move on to the next area. Again, we're just procking bait and switch here. Cataclysmic. Okay, I've done that. Head over to the next area. And once we get here, we pop our hammers. And our hammers at him.
Cool. Just like that. Done the first of three phases necessary. What I'll do now is I can jump off and show you the build that I'm using, explain the weapons a little bit. So you just rinse and repeat and do that again until it's over, until you killed them. All right, now let's break down the exact build that we're using. We are using hammers. We've got Hammer of Soul on. It's definitely gonna be important to pick this super. This can do a ton of damage, especially at range. We got the tall wall on, which is gonna block off enemies from shooting us. Catapult lift. I made a video recently saying that to use catapult lift because why would you use high lift? It's not good, but but some people are like, I like high lift, Lucky. Leave my high lift alone. If you want to, that's fine. I recommend catapult though, but it doesn't really matter for the build. And then we have Bonk, and then we have Healing Nade, and we're using Roaring Flames and Soul Invictus. And what we're doing with this is if we do ever hit those Bonk hammers on them, final blows with solar abilities or ignitions increase the damage of your solar abilities. So those Bonk hammers will get even more powerful. We're really not leaning too much into that for this build. So keep that in mind that we're not trying to run around and bonk a ton of things. And the next we have Soul Invictus. This is very important though. These sunspots are huge and very, very important. And sunspots apply scorch and deal damage to targets inside entering a sunspot applies restoration so you can get your restoration by throwing your healing nade at your feet and then alternatively something that i wasn't doing necessarily the best job of is you can get a bonk kill and then that'll create a sunspot step in that and that'll give you restoration you can extend that restoration with your sunshot because of this fragment right here which is empyrean solar weapon or ability final blows extend the duration of restoration and radiant so this is really huge and really really helpful to extend that timer so that way you're just constantly having healing because enemies are just constantly bombarding you, shooting you nonstop. The lights are spawning underneath you and burning you from down below. It's just nonstop chaos. And so you're going to want to have restoration on at all times. So that's why we have Empyrean on. And then we're also going to buff our Empyrean by having Ember of Solace. This isn't entirely necessary. I just decided to add this into it because we are leaning so heavily into restoration for this build. The next one that's extremely important is going to be Ember of Torches. All of those bonk kills you get are going to give you Radiant. And that's also going to help you cause tons of ignitions, which is in the artifact this season. And then we have Ember of combustion here just final blows with your solar super cause targets to ignite so when you do throw that super out there it will ignite a ton of enemies and create fire sprites obviously we're mostly just using the super to hit the boss but if you do throw it at any ads it's nice to just create ignitions and just clear the entire room the weapon i'm using in my kinetic slot was the scatter signal this is the new one from this season it's got controlled burst it's got overflow so it gets a huge magazine every time i pick up ammo We've got boss spec on it We've got accelerated coils arrowhead break and this is just really good damage output it shoots the one shot the blights and just a really good weapon overall you don't have to have this you could use something else this is not a necessity to this build or to this loadout sunshot is pretty much a necessity though this thing is just so good and just synergizes so well with our build you'll see when we get into the artifact mods in just a moment and then cataclysmic there's nothing too special here everyone already knows about this i feel like and has used this since the linear fusion rifle meta back in the day we've got bait and switch which just means i have to hit an enemy with the fusion a hand cannon and then i hit them with this and i'll proc bait and switch which is a massive damage buff and then i'm trying to hit at least four crits in a row so that way I can get four times the charm and get two shots refunded. We got enhanced battery, so we get a little bit bigger magazine, fluted barrel, boss spec as usual. And so that's everything for the weaponry. For the armor side of things, it's important to have the right mods on. We've got hands on, so when I do get melee kills, it'll give me a little bit of super energy. It's not entirely necessary. I'm not like leaning into this a ton, but you know, there's no other mods that really help that much. Harmonic Siphon, though, is a necessary mod for this one because we're getting a ton of sunshot kills, which means there are orbs everywhere, which is going to feed into our build amazingly, give us weapon damage, increased weapon damage damage due to solar surge on our boots and then we have heavy ammo finder this is absolutely essential because once you've done one full loop you're gonna run out of heavy ammo as you'll notice in the gameplay behind you here and when you run out of heavy ammo heavy ammo finder is definitely gonna help you get that back and then we have syntheseps on the gauntlet heavy handed when you get those bonk melee kills you'll create orbs of power and then your sunshot's gonna reload a little bit faster with this so we like that and then we have impact induction causing damage with your powered melee reduces your grenade cooldown which will help you get those healing nades back so you want to throw bonk here and there on the chest piece is very important for you're gonna want these exact mods you're gonna want melee resist void and arc resist that's definitely the best for trying to solo this guy and then on the boots we're gonna have recuperation so when you do pick up an orb you're gonna get a little chunk of health scavenger is gonna be huge because you're gonna run out of power ammo when you drop down you're gonna want to be able to pick up more you don't want it to drop a little bit bigger so you can actually fill up your ammo again and then solar weapon surge so that way your linear fusion and your sunshot do just a little bit more damage it's very nice lastly we're on the class item time dilation is gonna be huge so that way you get an extended time 
timer for your damage increase from your solar surges. And then we're also gonna have powerful attraction. If you do pop your Titan wall at any point in time, you're gonna pick up those orbs nearby. I like this one quite a bit. And then we have proximity ward. If you ever need to hit a finisher, you'll have an overshield to keep you alive. That's very nice. The stats that you're gonna want is gonna be 100 resilience, of course, and then 100 discipline is next most important. And then as much recovery as possible. Everything after that doesn't matter at all. You don't need any mobility. You don't need any strength. And intellect's not necessarily too bad, but you really don't need it that much. Now into the class item. This one is huge. Make sure you have these mods on or else you are going to have a bad, bad day trying to solo this boss. And you might not even be able to solo floss it unless you have these mods unlocked. So I recommend leveling up before you do so. Get solo operative. You'll definitely want this. I think it's 15, 20% more damage when you're solo. And if obviously you're trying to solo the boss, this is essential. You're going to save yourself having to do so many more damage cycles. So you'll need this for sure. Then you're also going to need rays of precision. You get radiant from getting bonk hits. And when you're radiant, your sunshot will then cause ignition. So that's why this one's huge. And then we also have revitalizing blast, which means if you needed to at any point in time, you could throw your hammer at the boss or at any enemy and it would actually debuff them. That's actually quite strong. This one ties really well into rays of precision, which is flint striker, rapid solar weapon, precision hits and rapid solar weapon, final blows, grant radiant. So this will actually give you radiant if you don't actually get any hits with your bonk hammer. So that's also extremely nice if you want to keep your distance, you're trying to play your life. And then heart of the flame, that's not going to apply here because we're solo. We have kindling trigger, which is radiant causes solar weapons to apply scorch to unscorched combatants. This one's nice as well. I mean, you're going to apply a little bit of scorch when you're getting those sunshot hits and kills and explosions. And then flame fiber is definitely going to be helpful so you can slot on your mods a little bit easier. And then a must have mod though is definitely this one from once you came. This will increase the ability damage to taken and scorched combatants, making your bonk a little bit stronger. You'll definitely want that one. And that's it for the build. This is how to solo the dungeon boss. Best of luck to you out there. If you haven't watched the other guides and tutorials on how to solo these dungeon bosses, make sure to scroll through the channel or click on the screen here to watch one of those right now. Smash the like button. See you in the next one. Later. And if you're feeling thirsty out there, make sure to use code LUCKY10P to save some money on G Fuel. Also, make sure you're following me on Twitch and Kick. I go live all the time playing Destiny 2. Lastly, make sure you're following me on X, Instagram, and TikTok where I deliver Destiny 2 news to you daily. I appreciate all the followers out there.